Cyrus, do the intro for me. You got a scooch, man. Alright, I'm gonna... Alright, well. I tried. What's up, guys? So, just as a TLDR of what I just showed, in an effort to keep streaming as much as I have been, and put out videos at a decent rate while I work on these longer projects that take me some time, I'm gonna be doing some of these off-the-top, scriptless videos talking about different topics in Monster Hunter, or any topics for that matter. And as a little bonus to myself, and maybe to you guys, I'll be playing you guys some music. So, I hope you enjoy. Alright guys, so a question I get asked a lot is, is this monster's armor set worth making? Is this monster's gear worth making? And I get it, right? Because when you're making some gear, especially the monster's full set, it can be a little tedious, sometimes requiring multiple of whatever rare drop it gives. So I get it, you know, you want to know, is it worth it? Is it worth my time to make this set? And I'm always particularly curious about two sets in uh, every Monster Hunter game. I'm always curious about the flagship's gear and the secret final boss's gear. But right now we're going to talk about the final boss's gear, Shara Ishvalda. First off, the set looks pretty damn dope. It has kind of this ethereal, Buddhist, paladin kind of look, and I dig it. So let's take a look at the skills. We got Health Boost, Recovery Up, Part Breaker, Coalescence, Defense Boost, and Crypt Boost. Um, at first glance, it's not that amazing, although we got something interesting going on here with the set bonus. True Gaia's Veil, or regular Gaia's Veil. So what it does is, when you have a mantle, you get Windproof, earplugs, tremoras, and flinch free. Basically all the things that protect you from the impairments that monsters can do. And then if you have the five piece, then you have everything maxed out. So what essentially this is, is that it gives you rock steady, but no matter what mantle you're using. So what you can do is you can wear another mantle that lasts longer or recharges faster than rock steady. Wait, that's a thing, right? Mantles have different times? Yeah. So you can use mantles other than Rocksteady, but still get the Rocksteady bonuses, plus whatever your mantle already gives. And if you cycle it, and maybe with Tool Specialist or something, you can have almost full uptime of the set bonus, which is pretty good. The beta set does have a decent amount of slots, so you can get a little creative here. But overall, when would you use this set? Well, listen, I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. You play it how you want, you play it for fun. One thing I'll never really condone is tank sets. In my opinion, the best defense is always a good offense. The monster can't kill you if it's dead. But I get it. Sometimes a monster just has your number, right? You just you keep getting clapped, and you're in a situation where, all right, man, I just need to kill this thing. I have to do it solo. I just need one more gem. I just need one more claw or whatever. It even has part breaker. So this set, I think, is like, all right, I just need to get in there one more time, get the damn piece I'm missing, and get out of there. And even skills like Coalescence will help you take disadvantages of you, you know, if you're getting constantly blighted, now you can turn that into something offensive. Speaking of which, I want to talk a little bit about Coalescence, because it's such an interesting skill. Coalescence is one of the new skills in the game, so basically you get a buff when you recover from blights or abnormal statuses. And it's pretty interesting, like looking at it, I immediately thought this skill could be really strong if we could figure out how to like properly optimize this, right? Because it's such a weird condition. You have to remove uh, blights from yourself, which could still work, right? You could run like blight resistance, which helps you get rid of them really fast. Or you can fight a monster that is just constantly blighting you. Hopefully I'm not a lazy f and I go test that and show it in the background. And hopefully I show the uptime of coalescence as well, just because I know some of you guys will want to know. As a full set, the set is pretty good. Very defensive. Like I said, you can bring the set bonus against something that does a lot of these different kinds of impairments. Maybe like the Metal Rats, or Savage Joe, or something like that. But still be able to optimize it in a way where you're not just going full tank. You know, with Crit Boost and Coalescence, you'll be able to get in some damage skills in there, and still be doing some damage while staying alive. The set does have some pretty solid mix-up potential, I think. The chest, with the points in Coalescence, and the arms as well. I was rocking the arms for a while, I think I still am. If you have terrible RNG like me and you're trying to make some low budget sets, low budget as in you're still missing a lot of decos and you have some unfinished charms, right? 
The arms are great because they have two points in crit boost and a level four deco slot. So I think you're either gonna rock the chest or arms in some way, or rock the four set or five set bonus. So my final verdict is yeah, it's pretty good. It's up there. I think it's worth making. You know, we've had better final boss sets. We've had worse final boss sets. It's it kind of falls in the middle. It's all right. I guess. Yeah, that's it.